Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. In the series of Geography Through Map, today we come up with the fourth chapter. And as we did in the previous third chapter, today also we are going to continue with the environment portion. I hope you have gone through the other three lectures on this series and I hope you have understood those 30 places and let's look at the place 31 to 40 today. The first place that we have chosen is New Delhi COP 14. Now this is not a new place we know this capital of ours. Now this was in news because of the fact that the 14th conference of parties that is COP 14 of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification that is UNCCD had done its convention in New Delhi. The important thing was that for the first time India and specifically New Delhi was hosting a COP of the UNCCD. So the important thing here is this first time. First time we are doing this. For your knowledge, you should also go through the UNCCD Convention to Combat Desertification because it has come here. It may not come as a geography through map question. It may be a question on UNCCD only. So you should be knowing that. Apart from that, one major thing that came out of this whole discussion was the Delhi Declaration. Now, in all, 196 countries had participated here. And along with the European Union, they all had adopted the Delhi Declaration, which raises or which had raised the ambitious targets with a people's first approach to restore the land. So as you can understand, this is all about desertification. So the whole idea is to restore the land. But then the priority here would be given to people's first approach. That is something that is very, very important. Now let's move to 32nd place. Now, as we can see, Talcher is in the state of Odisha. So why is Talcher in news? See, it is in news because of, again, something happening for the first time. And what is that? See, for the first time, coal gasification based ammonia urea complex is being set up in India. So this is something very, very important. Now, capacity is something that we can forget. But for your information, I'll tell you some 2,200 tons per day of ammonia plus some 3,850 tons per day of urea would be the design capacity of this particular plant. Along with this, there would also be a byproduct of 100 TPD, that is tons per day of sulfur flakes, which would be sold as a sellable byproduct. Now here, you should remember that Talcher is in the district Angul of Odisha and it is not very far. Bhuvaneshwar is somewhere here, around 126 kilometers from Bhuvaneshwar. So remember this point. Now, the 33rd place is Mahabaleshwar, also known as Queen of Hill Stations. As you can see in the map, it is here in the state of Maharashtra, somewhere southeast of Mumbai. As you can see, this is the place. Now, why is Mahabaleshwar such an important place for us? You have to understand, last year, Mahabaleshwar had even more rainfall than Mosinram, which is the wettest place on the earth. So you can imagine having more rainfall than Mosinram. It was wetter than Mosinram last year. And so it was in news. Now, the second point is not important, but you can see that this hill station Maharashtra received this many millimeter rain as against Mohsin Rams 6218.4 so almost 900 millimeter rainfall extra or more compared to Mohsin Ram from June 1st to September 4th according to the Indian Meteorological Department so understand this is something that you should remember for prelims that this place last year received more rainfall, even more than Mohsin Ram, which is the wettest place on earth. I've already said that this place is also known as Queen on Hill Stations. And geographically, this is located in the Shahidri Hills. This is something that you should remember. And the district to which it belongs, it belongs to Satara district. So this is another important fact that you can remember about. Mahabaleshwar and finally as you can see its name is being derived from three words Maha, Bal 
and Ishwar. And this whole place gets its name because of the Lord Mahadev temple that is here. And as far as these three words, Maha means great, Bal means power and Ishwar means God. So this place gets its name from the Lord Mahadev's temple and you can see how the nomenclature has been done. Let's move to the 34th place and that's Kaleshwaram. Now, why is it in news or why was it in news? The thing is, it is one of the largest multi-stage, multi-purpose lift irrigation project in the world. Not only in Asia, not only in India, but it is in the world. So it is very much in news. Where is it exactly? As you can see in the map, it's in Telangana. It's a place called Kaleshwaram and exactly a, another place called Bhupalpalli. It's located over there. As you can see in the map itself, there are two very important rivers, Pranita rivers and Godavari river. Basically, this place Kaleshwaram, it is the place where these two rivers, they come and meet each other. So you should be remembering this. So you can see this lift irrigation project will be the world's largest multi-stage, multi-purpose lift irrigation. It was inaugurated in June 2019. As you can see, it's built across the Godavari River. Do remember this river's name also, as I've already mentioned. And finally, remember before this, one of the biggest lift schemes in the world were the Colorado lift scheme in America and the great man-made river in Egypt. And now all these would be surpassed by Kaleshwaram. Now you can imagine how big this project is just by the aspects which are involved in this multi-purpose project. It is said that it would be irrigating 45 lakh hectares of land and it would be used for almost two crops in a year and will meet the drinking water capacity of almost 70% for this whole state and would also help the nearby industry. So this is a huge project in itself. Moving ahead to place number 35th, we have the Nandan Kanan Geological Park and it is located in the state of Orissa here in Bhuvaneshwar. So why was it news? Because it's the first zoo in the world to breed white tiger and melanistic tiger. This is something that you should remember. Apart from this, this is also the only conservation breeding center of Indian pangolin in the entire world. So for these two facts, do remember Nandan Kanan Zoological Park. Established in the year 1960, this is a 437 hectare zoo and botanical garden located in Bhuvneshwar which was opened for the public in 1979 and also became the first zoo in the country to join the World Associations of Zoos and Aquariums in the year 2009. So many firsts are there with regards to Nandan Kanan. Nandan Kanan is all over the world known for the first thing. It is known for this breeding of white tiger and the melanistic tiger which you could see. So this is something very very important that you should remember. Moving ahead to the 36th place, we have Bukka Patna Chinkara Wildlife Sanctuary and as you can see it's in the state of Karnataka and this is the place that's Tumkuru which is very close to Bengaluru. So why is it in news? It is in news because this sanctuary has a unique savanna habitat which is very essential for the survival of the rare Chinkara. Now, remember this for the Chinkara thing because the State Board of Wildlife has made this sanctuary a certified protected Chinkara habitat. Along with that, one more thing that you can remember about this 148 square kilometer area's wildlife sanctuary is that this is the southernmost tip of the distribution of this chinkara as far as India is concerned. That is beyond this, you would not find the chinkaras as far as the country is concerned. So do remember this also for our exams perspective. Moving ahead to the place 37 number. It's Iramati Dibalu. And as you can see in the map, it's here in Vishakhapatnam. That's the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now this Iramati Dibalu, it's a Telugu word. So what exactly this Telugu word means? It means red sand dunes or the red mud hillocks. Small, small hillocks are constructed or are made by the nature 
here as far as Andhra Pradesh and Vishakhapatnam particular is concerned. It is a very famous tourist destination in this place. As you can see, this is dissected and stabilized coastal. That is on the coasts you can find this red sediment mounds and they are located between Vishakhapatnam and Bhimunipatnam as far as Andhra Pradesh is concerned. So here you can see this is Vishakhapatnam and this is Bhimupatnam. Between these two on the coasts, you would have a lot of these small, small hillocks which are red in color and they are made out of these red sediment mounds and the construction is mentioned over here. These are the natural ravines and they are formed over the years due to wind currents as well as the soil erosion. And one more thing that you can remember that they have been given the geographical indication tag. This is one of the most important place as far as this port city is concerned. Moving ahead to place number 38 and now we go one place outside our country. It's Mount Sodom Salt Cave also known as as you can see Malham Cave which is beneath the Mount Sodom. It's in the country Israel and why is it known? The Israeli cave explorers they have said that they have discovered the world's longest salt cave near the desert site. So you can see near this desert this cave has been discovered also known as you have to remember this is also known as Malham Cave and here the explorers are saying they have discovered this world's longest salt cave near this desert site. Now one or two things that you can remember these caves are around 10 kilometers in length and they run through the Mount Sodom. So one thing you should remember about Mount Sodom too that this is the largest mountain of Israel and is nearby the southwest corner of the Dead Sea which is very very adjacent to it. So do remember Mount Sodom at the same time also remember the Mount Sodom Salt Cave also known as Malham. Let's move to the 39th point that's the National Chambal Sanctuary. Now we know Chambal is a very very important river very important tributary of river Yamuna and it is there in three states as you can see in this map Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and as well as that in Rajasthan. So why is it in news? It is in news because Government of India declared this sanctuary as eco-sensitive zone last year. Now, why is this sanctuary so important? Because it is home to gangetic dolphins and critically endangered gharials. In fact, almost 75% of the critically endangered gharials would be found in this sanctuary. Which range does it belong to? Remember, it belongs to Vindhyan range extending along the Chambal River and ending in the Yamuna river which is as I said Chambal being the tributary of Yamuna and finally I have also mentioned the spread of this it's there in Rajasthan MP as well as UP. Now here you should always remember three important dams name which are there on this river Chambal as you can see here this is the Kota barrage then you have the Jawahar Sagar dam and then you have Rana Pratap Sagar dam and finally you have the Gandhi Sagar Dam which is slightly at a distance as you can see this is the fourth dam. So sometimes in prelims you may be asked to arrange these four dams north to south or even south to north. So always remember Kota then Jawahal Sagar Dam then Rana Pratap Sagar Dam and then Gandhi Sagar Dam. This is the arrangement KJRG. This is something that you should always remember. Make some thing in your mind. How would you remember them? And you should remember this order. Moving to the 48th place. The important thing is the Ramsar list. And here, please study the Ramsar list on your own. I'm only telling you that some new places have been added in the Ramsar list. And this is very, very important from our exams perspective. What is this? See, as you can see in this map, some new Ramsar sites are there in India. As far as Punjab is concerned, in Punjab, three more. The Nangal Wildlife Sanctuary, the Keshopur Wetland, which is also known as Gurdaspur Bird Sanctuary and Bees Wetland Site. In Uttar Pradesh, Sarsai Navarjheel, Nawabganj Bird Sanctuary, Samaspur Bird Sanctuary, Sandi Bird Sanctuary, Parvati Arga Bird Sanctuary, Saman Bird Sanctuary. And in Maharashtra, Nandur Madhameshwar Bird Sanctuary. So overall 10 more sites. Now, what all questions can be asked based on this? First of all, you should always know about Ramsar site. What exactly they are. How did this convention come into picture? 
what is the number of Ramsar sites now in India after this 10 being added? And here also not all 10 would be equally important because the thing is Maharashtra and Nandur Madhameshwar birth sanctuary, this is the first Ramsa site as far as Maharashtra is concerned. So you can understand Punjab and UP had Ramsa sites earlier also. For Maharashtra, this is the first. So out of these 10, for our exam, the 10th one, that is the Nandur Madhameshwar birth sanctuary becomes the most prominent one. Now you have to understand this recognition by the Ramsar authorities of getting these 10 more sites as far as the Ramsar sites in India is concerned is an achievement for the government of India. So these 10 more sites or the wetland sites have been declared important for the international community. And it clearly shows that GOI is doing some good efforts towards the conservation, restoration and rejuvenation of wetlands. I've already said do study the history of Ramsa. I'm not getting into that, but to just give you an idea, this was signed on 2nd February 1971 and is one of the oldest intergovernmental accord. Now, I'm not getting into this, but then question on Ramsa site has already come in our UPSC prelims exam. So I don't expect directly that sort of question, but then there might always be a question on Ramsa site directly from our perspective. Here do also look into the Nalse Jal. Now this is a very ambitious project of our Prime Minister where he wants piped water connection to every household by 2024. As the name is very clear. Nal. Nal means the tap. Se Jal. That is the water should come from the tap and the, the target year has been put as 2024 and that's a very very ambitious scheme. Along with this as I've already said, the number has gone up to 37 now. And important thing is Punjab already had three Ramsar sites. They have added three more. I have taken their names. UP had one Ramsar site and they have added six more. And this is the first Ramsar site for Maharashtra. So out of the 10, this is the most important which you should always remember. So this was all from this particular lecture where we talked about 10 places with regards to environment. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about 10 places which were important last year from the perspective of art and culture. So till then, goodbye and thank you. I hope you like this lecture. Keep on studying. Best of luck from Baiju's IES.